I'll just wait for they know. They might be talking about the development, I'm not sure. I'll just let you know that the webcast has started. So whenever everyone's ready, we'll we'll start the briefing. Uh, Councillors, welcome to our briefing committee and our development applications committee for the 20th of September. I will just note uh, that the webcast has started and I'd like to welcome you to this meeting. Uh, we'll open it at six minutes past six. I'll note that with all council meetings, this meeting is also being live streamed and accessible on council's websites. Uh, I would also ask if those present could stand for the Indigenous acknowledgement and the prayer. The City of Newcastle acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Iwabakal and Waramai peoples. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and continuing relationship with the land. And they are the proud survivors of more than 200 years of dispossession. Council reiterates its commitment to address disadvantages and a chain justice for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples of this community. <clears throat> Almighty God, we humbly ask you to bless this meeting, direct and prosper our deliberations for the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of Newcastle. Colleagues, will you honour the memory of those who served and died that we might meet here in peace? Thank you, councillors. Our councillors, I don't have any requests to attend by audiovisual means, or I do not have any requests for leave of absence or an apology. So I'll just ask for declarations of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest. If there are none, I'll just move straight on to our East End Public Domain, domain Plan, Stage 1 briefing. And I'd like to invite uh, Timothy Daly, our Senior Project Planner, and Corrine Jurd, our Assets Coordinator Environment. Welcome. And just acknowledge we have Rob Dudgeon as well, uh, their manager and Joe Rigby here from the team. And whenever you're ready, please begin. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we have a presentation here, we are. thank you. Um, good evening, Lord Mayor and Councillors. Um, the City of Newcastle is currently competing, completing the East End Stage 1 Public Domain Plan Works. Phase two of the project involves removing three fig trees on the planned three removal of three fig trees on the refuge island along Hunter Street between Perkins and Brown Street. I notice a motion was made in May this year regarding the three trees and their planned removal. Um, the purpose of this presentation is to provide an overview of the processes undertaken by the City of Newcastle to determine that the removal of these trees is required through holistic asset management of trees. Next slide, please. Uh, the East End Master Plan was adopted in 20. Uh, 18, after a detailed community consultation, the plan showed a complete renewal of the public domain, public domain establishment, establishment of a road, a cycleway and landscape features. The verge that formed the farm, former bus stop was excluded from the plans and as well as the Newcastle Light Rail Works that happened around the same time. Next slide, please. Detailed design of the Public domain commenced in 2019 with community placemaking workshops, stakeholder consultation, and a critical review of the adopted PDP. Several key changes were proposed to suit the constraints of the site, improve the safety of users, and maximize the opportunities within the public domain, including lighter pavements, more gardens, and customized furniture. These changes were exhibited in March, 2020 with ex extensive community consultation and on-site drop-in sessions to understand the com any community concerns or feedback. The modified plan was endorsed by council in May, 2020. Next slide, please. As part of the 2020 review, the landscape section between Perkins and Brown Street was included as it had, as it had been previously missed. Impacts to the trees were assessed at this point and the plans adjusted accordingly to accommodate 
or replace trees as required. Increased gardens were proposed along Scott Street to create a buffer to the light rail and a green gateway into the east end. As part of these works, the three western figs had been proposed for removal as they were in declining health and we were unable to improve their compromised growing conditions. Next slide, please. The four figs to the verge of the old bus stop have been routinely inspected by sea and arborists. All of the trees were impacted by the light rail works and the three western figs were noted as being in a state of decline by both CN and Transport for New South Wales arborists. The most eastern fig was in a good state of health and considered able to withstand both the works by the Transport for New South Wales and the proposed upgrade by CN. However, the proposed public domain works would further exacerbate the decline of the western trees and the additional bulk earthworks and the removal of surrounding pavements, which have assisted in anchoring the trees in place, would also be problematic. An assessment of the three trees in, li three trees in line with the urban forest technical manual and the infrastructure work test within against the plan renewal works indicated that the impacts would be significant and the succession and a succession plan was adopted. Next, plan next slide, please. This slide shows the growth of the most eastern fig in comparison to the others, demonstrating how favorable conditions and twice the space has allowed this tree to strive. Extensive electrical trenching has recently occurred along the southern edge and the light rail works in the northern edge have compromised any routes along Scott Street. Next slide, please. The removal of the figs will result in a 32% loss of canopy to the street However, with the retention of both the eastern fig and the southern plane trees, the green corridor will be retained. The project proposed the removal of unnecessary hard stand, which will be replaced with irrigated gardens and new trees. Additional trees will also be provided on the southern side in irrigated tree vaults that will aid in their establishment and a holistic lifestyle man management of the trees. The replacement ratio of trees is larger and it will be estimated that the loss of canopy will be replaced within five to seven years. The irrigating gardens will also significantly reduce heat island effect and aid in the establishment of the, tree, the proposed trees. Next slide, please. Uh, this artistic render looks east from the corner of Brown Street to Hunter. It shows the general alignment of the trees and the proposed gardens providing a green gateway into the east end. This was a highly desirable outcome from the placemaking workshops in 2019. Next slide, please. This artistic render is from underneath the Eastern Fig looking west and shows the reduced hard stand adjacent Scott Street and the improved streetscape along the southern side of Hunter Street. Pavement and new trees are proposed to be permeable over the vaults that will aid in the development of the trees. Uh, next slide, please. I think I heard. Um, yeah, I guess this is the colourful end of town. So the proposal um, in terms of the successional planting for the site includes the introduction of one of the tree species that's come from the assessment of the city's network of trees and how we will basically try to future-proof them with respect to climate change impacts. So the Stenocarpus sonatus, the firewheel trees, you may know it, um, is quite an ornamental um, tree. We, we don't have a stand effectively in the city. Um, again, in coping with projected climate, we ex still expect to see the sort of flower wheels that um, you can see here in the images. Um, obviously, choosing for form, particularly in that location down against the um, light rail corridor and identifying uh, the narrowness of the, of the um, area in which we're planting. We still expect to see uh, quite an extensive height and that'll be down to the design processes that Tim has actually um, identified with respect to the new planting. Um, it should provide some excellent shade. And the next slide, please. I did think it was probably worthwhile saying that these trees are synonymous. I don't know if any of you know Margaret Preston's work, but she has uh, basically seen them as quite evocative 
Um, and her creative spirit, uh, as you can see here, is very much triggered by the form and function of the flowers. Um, it is one of the few trees that will also bring um, nectar eating birds into the city. So as, as a pollinator, it's not often that we see this. European honeybees can also um, do the same job, but if it brings the sort of honey eaters that you can see here into this section of the inner, of the inner city and connect them to other plantings um, that are um, being um, mooted in other areas that are co-located to this, um, we'll see, I think we'll just see a, a really beautiful entry into this part of the city that's actually backed up by some biological integrity. Um, and that's an unusual thing for um, this sort of um, uh, inner city revitalization. It, it, I think it, it forms a truly um, inspiring change in the way that we're doing business. Um, yep. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Um, the delivery of the East End has been broken up into stages to minimize the impact on the community and, and allow council to forecast budgets and delivery. Uh, we completed the blue phase one this year. Uh, we have completed designs for phase two and phase three with construction works yet to be uh, programmed and prioritized. Uh, we've also started the detailed design for the rest of the site, the yellow section, um, and that is due to be completed within the next 12 months. Next slide. And that concludes our presentation. Um, are there any questions? Uh, thank you. Councillors, are there any questions? Uh, Councillor McCabe. Thank you very much. I uh, just want to understand a bit better um, the, the damage that's happened to the tree and the reason that they need to come out soon, sooner rather than later. So you, I heard you talking about that the roots had been damaged during the works, but um, can you just explain a bit more? Because I suppose what I'm interested in is whether or not there's a possibility that the fig trees could stay for longer until I, I you know, agree that you've selected some great, great trees and the design for the future is, looks great, but um, why do they have to come out now? That's my question. Um, well, the, there's two things that would happen. Um, we have to slightly uh, realign the road. Um, so they'd be extensive. In addition to the bulk earthworks that have already occurred on both sides of the street, we'll be further exacerbating that as we do a slight realignment of that road. Um, and it's an opportunity to, like, they've been identified as a problem um, with declining health. Um, as we work through that space, that's the opportunity to get there and do the works all at once, um, minimizing the impact on the community as we work through it. So it's that that's just the way we've approached this project in general, minimizing impact. So there is a construction, sorry. Yeah. It, so there's obviously a construction impact that it, it means that the trees themselves certainly won't survive the um, the revitalization of that site. But we also um, have looked at and one of the previous slides might have been four can actually really clearly demonstrates the difference between um, hills figs in that location that that is thriving and that's the one at the um, at the eastern end compared to three, which um, ostensibly have all actually been in the ground at the same time. The three at the western end most particularly have been so put there in about the 1935, about as best as we can see. And what's happened to them over time is that the garden bed that, that were there originally have actually shifted and moved. So the trees themselves are now in constrained sites with respect to their roots and there has been continual work in that location, particularly around sewer, the main, a major sewer um, access pit there. I think we can all remember the smell of walking past there often. Um, yeah, th that's the sewer works that are in the corner. Um, and so over time, so during the 50s and 60s, the trees were actually topiary. So they're actually being cut back and formed. And then uh, basically later on, so about the 80s, we basically did a very similar thing to the um, the Layman Street figs and other figs in the city where we then enabled the limbs to just continue to grow. So pruning stopped happening. It was deemed to be an inappropriate treatment, which it still is today. But those lever arms have extended out. And now what we see are trees which are then impacting other assets like 
like rail. And so you have pruning for an outcome, not pruning for the tree's health. And that's why we see those trees in the state of decline that they're in. So less leaf mass, uh, reduced height. If you stand back on the opposite side and look at the the, the two ends, if you like, the two bookends, you can see why the actual uh, design has actually targeted looking at improved growing conditions for that uh, eastern tree. There's a lot of life left there and it's very limited with those three at the other end. So it isn't about so much the species as about the condition and in an asset management whole of life cycle we're in a position where we can actually improve the overall network of our urban forest as part of this project and and that's basically where the infrastructure works test that looks at whether a tree should be protected or removed and does a balance on the design that's where it's fallen uh, could i just ask do you have a uh, an image in the presentation of the trees you're talking about uh, yes yeah. that might be good i'm yep, not sure if sure. all councils have had the opportunity to inspect the site yeah. uh, slide six would be an appropriate mm -hmm. one to look at um, that shows the the impacts that had happened to the site and also the it's a panoramic view of the two tree are uh, the two <coughs> stands of trees the singular tree and then the three trees by themselves you can see that the singular tree far exceeds the canopy of the three trees combined. Can we get that image back for the councils to see a little longer? And come up for a moment. It was a different, it was a different image. Yeah. Uh, next, the, the next slide, I believe. Yeah, that one yeah. is a great one to look at. Tim, just while we're waiting to, to get that presentation back up and, yes. and, the, and the correct image, can you just talk a little bit, you, you mentioned in passing the necessity of actually doing some, some work to the road. I know the work you're talking about, it's actually quite dangerous. It's actually impossible when you're turning left, you actually have to look completely back over your shoulder to see oncoming traffic, traffic that's when you're turning into Hunter Street. But can you just talk about that? Just to, That's not work that can be delayed. There's a, there's a very serious safety risk there in terms of, of cars that are turning on Hunter Street. Yeah, so we have we have looked at the, that's the intersection of Brown and Perkins. So we have looked at the, we've looked at the whole, how the whole space works. So we've, we've uh, improve the public domain at the front of um, Momos, um, but and then essentially continue that the whole way along Scott Street. We have uh, identified where pedestrians will be, um, pedestrian movements through the space, and uh, uh, within this location, they will be on the southern side of Hunter Street. So we've, we've proposed to maximise the pedestrian footprint within that side and minimise it on the northern side of the road. Um, so that does require a slight realignment, but we're also going to be digging up a lot of um, the pavements just to improve the general conditions of not only the trees on the southern side, but also all the new works on the, the northern side. So it's a, it's a really holistic approach to the street. Um, and if, if the trees were in great health, we would have kept them and done everything we could to retain them, but they were in a state of decline. And so we've seen this as the perfect opportunity to to renew the site as far as asset management. Yeah, the trees that are in decline are quite obvious when you look at them um, in real life. I think the aerial photo shows it a little better. Are there any other questions? Councillor McKenzie. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm sure you're in the same position as I am where we don't want to be cutting down healthy trees for landscaping purposes, but um, you know, we also don't want to keep, you know, disease trees or, or dying trees in, in the ground where not necessary. Um, I guess I'm I'm interested in the, the description of the trees as declining and also um, having reduced life expectancy. That's the language that's been used. And they're obviously relative terms. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they don't necessarily mean um, that the trees immediately need to, to come out. So I, I, I guess I'm trying to understand how the, what the relationship is between reduced life expectancy, what is the anticipated life expectancy without those works um, as a comparison, and also how that fits into that matrix that you were talking about when you're determining whether whether to retain a tr the, the, the trees, um, how life expectancy, but also 
tree health, biodiversity, uh, other val cultural values and so forth are factored in. Um, and yeah, what, what emphasis has been placed on life expectancy over some of the other considerations? Um, I, I guess um, all of those heads of consideration are put into the mix when we actually look at the decisions around cost-effective management um, of trees. In this situation, I think the, what we were looking at is the comparison between um, the investment that is required and the expected response from the tree, the single tree in the east, which actually has a canopy volume that's very comparable to three trees in the west and the history of those. So there isn't, there, there is limited opportunity to continue to see those trees thrive. I expect to see limb losses and leaf fall if in fact works were to be conducted in and around the root base of the trees. So the arborist would say in the assessment of those heads of consideration that if those works go ahead, this is the expected outcome. So one of the issues we don't want to see is reducing the vitality and health of trees in doing our works and leaving behind a legacy where we could expect to see tree failure if that were the case. They might be fine today, but that issue of a useful life is around what sort of um, scope of a tree. So over 80 years, you would expect to see the benefits of a tree over maybe the, the middle 50 or 60 years once it gets to establishment. We tend to spend the most amount of money when it comes to managing in those latter years. And that is an absolutely defensible thing to do where trees are in parks or they're large or an instance like this, but becomes less defensible when in fact you can actually improve the overall performance by a removal and replacement strategy. So we don't shy away from trying to improve performance, but in this case, the limited space is not going to necessarily, we don't believe, provide those trees with the capacity to continue to thrive. If we thought we could do that, then they wouldn't have been brought forward in the design for replacement. But once they are out, we do believe that that new um, garden bed that exists, which can't be created while these trees are in place, would actually add to the overall benefit. And whilst whilst those stenocarbis, so whilst the firewheels are slightly smaller in form, they will actually be comparable to what you actually see there once the stand themselves get up. Um, and I'd also add that we've obviously kept as much as we can that's on the, where am I saying, southern, thank you, Jim, on the southern side, um, there are there's substantial um, plane trees and they will continue to perform in that location for many years um, whilst the works are actually done in a sensitive manner, which means we'll have obviously arborists on site. Um, so it is not a, it, it, it is not an exact science in that sense, but it certainly is one that is holistic and it thinks in a systems way about what the new site conditions will end up being. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Are there any other questions? If there are no other questions, uh, that will conclude our briefing committee for this evening. Really appreciate your time this evening and uh, looking forward to the next stage of renewal works in the CBD. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Uh, councillors, uh, that would close our briefing committee at 6.29pm. In doing so, I'll we'll also open at the same time our development application committee meeting. Uh, there have been no requests to attend by audiovisual means, uh, no apologies or leave of absence requested. I'll just ask, ask if there's any pecuniary or non-pecuniary uh, declarations of interest. I note that there are no declarations of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest. I'll go to the confirmation of the previous minutes from the DAC on the 16th of August. Do I have a move up? Uh, thank you, Councillor McKenzie, seconded Councillor Duncan. All those in favour, please raise your hand. Are there no votes against? I declare that carried unanimously. Uh, I'll go to the only item, uh, number 14, on page 8, DA2022-00500. Uh, 402 slash 116 Tudor Street, Hamilton, mixed use development, ancillary development to existing residential dwelling, uh, the awning. Do I have a mover of the motion? 
Uh, Councillor McKenzie, do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Walk, would you like to speak to the motion, Councillor? Uh, yeah, just very briefly, Lord Mayor, this, um, we've seen this one before a couple of times um, in relation to, to this development. Um, I voted against it once before. Um, the matters for which I voted against it are not relevant in this particular case, given that the modification here is relatively minor and, and in accordance with decisions that have already been made. Um, what makes this development important um, is that it's one of the early adopters of the uh, that Tudor Street uh, high density um, transit sort of uh, sorry growth corridor, um, and so in that in that sense, um, the fact that in previous decisions where it hasn't necessarily met with the landscaping requirements and there have been complications due to the history of the site, um, we've we've allowed it to to have those height exceedances in order to um, be one of those sort of leading examples of what development in that part of the world will look like. So um, in terms of the development here, the, or the modification here today, um, very consistent with the previous decisions, the uh, the additional uh, roof roofing or roof lining uh, is not objectionable and adds to um, the, the livability and amenity of the block. So happy to support that today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Walk, would you like to speak a seconder? Are there any other speakers for or against? If there are no other speakers, would you like a right of reply, Councillor? I'll put the motion as moved and seconded. I'll take the vote by division. All those in favour, please stand. Uh, Councillor Church, Councillor McCabe, Councillor McKenzie, Councillor Winnie Bartz, Councillor Wood, Councillor Duncan, Councillor Richardson, Councillor Clawson, Councillor Adam Chet, Councillor Barry, Councillor Walk, Councillor Paul, Councillor Nelms. As there are no votes against, I declare that motion carried unanimously. Uh, with that, the only item, I will close the development application committee meeting at 6.32pm and I'll just note that we will roll straight into our uh, workshops, councillors.